Hey guys, welcome to the Silver Report Uncut. Now we need to talk about China's banking sector. The reason being is it's the largest banking sector in the entire world. They also happen to have more than $20 trillion in bad bank assets, problematic bank asset. Now the reason we need to talk about this now is because it's a problem for the world economy. Now the Chinese central bank, they did a stress test on their largest banks. So they focused on their 30 medium and large sized banks that were tested and in their base case scenario they tested if GDP growth were to drop to 5.3 percent. What they found was that 9 out of 30 major banks failed and they also saw their capital adequacy ratio drop to 13.47 percent. Now in their stress test in the worst case scenario that's if their GDP growth drops to only 4.15%, which is 2% below the last official GDP print. What they found was that more than half of China's banks, these are their systemically important banks, or 17 out of 30 banks, failed the test. Now the Chinese financial system is around $41 trillion. It's dwarfs the United States financial system. And now this is the huge problem that I'm sure they're well aware of, that according to many Wall Street estimates, for example, JP Morgan came out and said that they now expect as little as 1% GDP growth for quarter one. And that's if everything calms down and comes back to normal within the next few weeks. If not, many analysts anticipate that the Chinese GDP growth will come into negative territory for the first time ever recorded. Now, if the PBOC's 2019 stress test is credible, this would be an event that they could never have fathomed. We could see the failure of more than half of China's systemically important banks, and that's only if GDP were to drop to 4.15%. What happens if the GDP print comes out negative? Now, China's banks are already having record loan defaults because the economy, it started slowing down and expanded at its slowest pace in the past 30 years. Not only have they just undergone the first bank seizure in 20 years at the Bosheng Bank, but there have been numerous bailouts of huge state-funded entities. For example, the Bank of Jinsao, Heng Feng. They were literally to the stage where they were piling cash in the front of the banks just to keep the customers calm. So I wanted to cover the comments from Yu Chun. He would be an analyst from the National Institution for Finance and Development. He said, quote, The banking industry is taking a big hit. The outbreak has already damaged China's most vibrant small businesses, and if it prolongs, many firms will go under and be unable to repay their loans, unquote. Now, UBS came out. They had growth estimates of GDP falling to 3.8% in the first quarter. Now, it wasn't just JP Morgan. UBS came out also, and they had growth estimates that the Chinese economy will fall to 3.8% in the first quarter from the 6% pace we saw at the end of the year. Now, there was a recent nationwide survey done in China, and it was discussing some of the issues for Chinese banks and small businesses. Now, the results of the survey, they revealed that 30% said that they expect to see revenue plunge more than 50% this year, and 85% said that they're unable to maintain operations for more than three months with the cash that is currently available. Now we do know there are official sources that have come out and commanded that the banks offer loans to these struggling businesses, even if they can't afford them. Now I wanted to cover the comments from Grace Wu. It would be the head of Greater China Banks at Fitch Ratings, now she said the thing that makes this very different from the 2008 global financial crisis and also what took place in 2003 is that we currently have a lack of bank capital to support an aggressive bank-led credit stimulus. Also, Chinese banks do not have the same capacity to replenish capital now given their profitability has trended down in recent years." Unquote. Currently shares of Chinese banks are underperforming the benchmark by the most in the past five years. Now the largest four state-owned lenders, they together control more than $14 trillion of assets. We look at ICBC, they have $4 trillion in assets. They're still down 11% year to date. China Construction Bank Corporation, they would be the nation's second largest bank. They've lost 7.6% so far in 2020. Now, S&P Global Ratings also felt the need to come out and comment on the stress that is facing the Chinese banking sector. And they said, quote, the resilience of China's banking system may be severely tested, unquote.
This is absolutely crazy. We see tons and tons of oil tankers have now been stranded in the ocean. Now first off, the problem being is oil demand has completely collapsed in China. And a lot of the times they're no longer taking these deliveries at the ports because they simply are maxed out of capacity. Since nothing is running, the production really is not operating anywhere near normal levels, they have no place for them to go. And they've already set out to deliver this oil. There's no need for it. So they've been parking them at places in the ocean, available ports, and now it's causing tremendous traffic jams down in the ports in Singapore. Now Goldman Sachs came out and predicted that the current oil demand shock is going to collapse Chinese oil consumption by 20% or 4 million barrels a day. What is most notable is that China is the world's largest oil importer. And the sharp decline in demand for China, which has essentially turned into a massive parking lot full of oil tankers and other vessels. Now usually this is one of the largest freight hubs and the busiest ports in the entire world. It's causing literal traffic jams. Now of course, most of China's industrial hubs have remained shuttered. They're having a lot of difficulty opening them. Some are opening here and there in limited capacity. They put a lot of effort out a few days ago to try to convince everybody that they're going to now restart everything, get everything back to normal. But we still have a lot of huge companies coming out and affecting shutdowns right now. You see, that equation doesn't make sense to me. It doesn't make sense how they can imply that some parts of the country are going to be able to get back on their feet and keep operating. Some of these manufacturers are going to get back to normal capacity. And yet other companies think that now is the perfect time to shut down just about all of their hotels. So if companies are still shutting down, how is it we're supposed to believe that we're set to see a V-shaped recovery going on for the Chinese economy? I really think a lot of these Wall Street analysts right now, they just don't want to lose out on all of those investors who have given their banks money. They can't very well go out and tell their clients. So instead, they want to have them continue to believe that there's really nothing wrong in the world. There's nothing wrong coming for the world economy. The impact is going to be very, very minute. We can see that entire narrative is starting to get holes punched all through it. We look at several companies and key retailers who have exposure to Chinese manufacturers who had seen their stocks begin to slide in Friday. Now probably one of the most interesting things is I just saw an article explaining how traffic congestion and how pollution was still running at normal levels. However, Morgan Stanley Research came out and released some of the pollution levels and they show it just about shows there's a complete and total shutdown of everything. There's just about nothing moving. Now, crude exporters from OPEC, they came out and reported weaker demand. They revealed that demand has weakened so significantly that rates for VLCCs, or very large crude carriers, to China have plunged. The following came from Bloomberg saying, quote, In gas markets, a one Chinese company declared force majeure, potentially allowing it to walk away from contractual commitments. The measure was rejected by Total SA and Royal Dutch Shell, PLC. There are now... 12 empty liquefied gas carriers sitting off the coast of Qatar, one of the world's biggest producers. While the precise reasons for the idling vessels are not known, the timing coincides with ship diversions, cargo cancellations, and reduced demand in Asia since the shock took hold. Oil tankers have been dwaddling off China." Unquote. Now, of course, these traffic jams that are developing in ocean ports around Asia they have now forced a lot of oil traders to instead transfer their crude to less expensive ships because they're not sure whether or not their ships are going to return after they send them out on a delivery. So they're switching over to pretty much disposable ships. So as they are filling up the oceans with these orders that are not being delivered, I'm not sure there's any way to accurately measure how this shutdown is going to impact the world economy. It's getting really hard to understand how the economy can endure such a shock like this. Literally, the economy in China is already collapsing, crude consumption has fallen through the floor, and you have parking lots full of tankers lining up throughout many countries in Asia. I don't see how China, and therefore the rest of the world, is going to be able to avoid recession. The global economy was in decline before this even came along. Now, we need to talk about this announcement that came out from the CDC. There's a lot of people, they would like us to believe that there's nothing to really be concerned about. My concern is that they have really hijacked this conversation. 
You literally are not allowed any access to real information. The only information we're allowed to see whenever you search this topic, it comes from cable news. Honestly, we come to programs like this to escape the cable news. Secondly, the information they're putting out, it seems like it's total lies. Now, the CDC just announced during a press briefing on Friday they're going to be rolling out five labs in Chicago, L.A., New York City, San Francisco, Seattle. The plan is to screen any patient who comes in with any flu symptoms, things like that. It's called the, quote, National Flu Surveillance Program, unquote. They also said the program is likely going to expand as more confirmed cases are expected in the coming days and weeks. Keep in mind, this is the same CDC who came out and said they expect community spread to be coming out and their plan is no longer to stop it, only to try to limit the damage. Now, honestly, from the official sources, it's kind of concerning that they're discussing like this because it almost seems like they're no longer trying to keep everyone calm. It seems like the most alarming information is that which is coming out from these official health organizations. Now, the CDC officials said that there could be many undetected cases of this illness in communities across the U.S., and so they need to institute this national screening program now, the agency also said they plan to expand to more cities until they achieve national surveillance, unquote. All right, thank you guys for stopping by and joining us here at the Silver Report Uncut. If you like the content, be sure to subscribe, like the videos, share the videos, get the word out. As always, stay safe.